Um, okay, assalamualaikum everyone. Um, so now uh, I would like to continue with uh, learning outcome number nine. Okay. Um, okay. So learning outcome number nine is on distinguishing between ethical values, accounting, and auditing techniques. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so what does it mean by um, the ethical value and how does it different than accounting and auditing techniques? Okay. Uh, so many accountants um, and most non-accountants hold the view that mastery of accounting or audit techniques is the initial condition of the accounting profession. Okay, but relatively few financial scandals are actually caused by methodological errors in the application of technique. Most are caused by error in judgment about the appropriate use of a technique or the disclosure related to it. Um, okay, uh, so meaning that um, uh, it's very important to, to, to have the um, definitely like um, as an accountant, we must have the accounting and auditing knowledge. Yeah, in order for us to proceed with the profession, okay. Um, but somehow, um, the uh, fraudulent activity at the point, um, the financial scandal as mentioned here, um, was somehow uh, happened due to the uh, error in judgment, okay. Um, on top of um, uh, yeah, of, on top of being um. Uh, uh, intentionally doing the fraud. Okay, some of these errors in judgment stem from a misinterpretation of the problem as a result of its complexity. Okay, whereas others are a result of lack of attention to the ethical value of uh, honesty, integrity, objectivity, uh, due care, confidentiality, and the commitment to the interests of others before those of oneself. Okay, so meaning that um, even though you have the accounting and auditing knowledge or techniques, yeah, but still um, the accountant um, um, did not really focus on being um, ethical in their work, kind of resulting in uh, most uh, financial scandals uh, happening around the world. Okay, so particularly in this situation of uncertainty, accountants must take care that their decisions are not tainted by uh, failing to observe proper uh, ethical values. Yeah, even though they, they face a situation of uncertainty, uh, of um, uh, requiring their judgment, so they cannot take that for granted by uh, not observing the uh, ethical value highlighted by the profession. Okay, so without ethical values, the trust necessary for for a fiduciary relationship cannot be sustained, and the credibility accorded and uh, rights allowed the accounting profession will be limited. Probably reducing the effectiveness an independent profession can bring to the uh, society. Okay. Um, okay, so, okay, uh, so now we move to learning opera number 10, yeah, uh, describe the concept of duty, loyalty, trust, and fiduciary duty. Okay, uh, so what does it mean by duty? Uh, duty is where the accountant or the, yeah, the accountants um, offer important service to the society. Um, including the shareholders, governments, employees, and lenders. Okay, so the performance of duties to their employers, professional accountants are expected to exercise the value of honesty, integrity, objectivity, and due care. So these values prohibit a professional accountant from being associated with a, a misrepresentation. Uh, so, an improper acts by employer should cause professional accountant to consider their responsibility to other stakeholders, including to those who would be disadvantaged by the act and their professional colleague whose reputation, reputation would be tarnished by association. 
and so meaning that uh, the accountants have a duty to their um, uh, uh, to to many stakeholders, yeah. Um, and they also they have the duty also to their employer, kan? But sometimes the employer, the person who normally request them to do those uh, fraudulent uh, atau pun uh, uh, misinterpretation of the fact, kan? Sometimes it is required by the board of the director for them to uh, falsify the account and so on, kan? Tapi uh, being holding the position as an accountant, they must know their responsibility not only to the employer but they must think of other stakeholders, especially those uh, shareholders that that uh, are relying on their reports. Lah. Okay, uh, loyalty. Yeah, loyalty is owed first to the public interest and then to the accounting profession through the observance of the principles articulated in its codes of conduct and its standards. Okay, um, so meaning that first of all, loyalty to the uh, public interest because um, as I mentioned, um, if you work with the accounting firm, so you are considered as a public accountant. Kenapa nama dia public accountant? Because you hold the trust of the public. You you uh, act on the behalf of the uh, shareholders. Yeah, you become the auditor of a company, you are working towards the ataupun you report to the shareholders, okay? For instance, an auditor's loyalty to the public should be primary and should not be less than the loyalty to existing shareholders uh, or owners, okay? So, your uh, loyalty to the management of the organization should rank below the public, existing shareholders, the accounting profession and the uh, audit firm. Okay. So, meaning that... Uh, First of all, loyalty to must be like by the public, and then to the existing shareholders, accounting profession, and the audit firm. Then last kali to the management. If you still remember, you learn audit point. Those auditors they work on uh, for the purpose of the uh, the report to the shareholders, not the management. Okay, trust. To have a broader trust between public and also the associ association in a long term for public protection. Okay, uh, fiduciary. Uh, a professional accountant is given the right to provide important fiduciary, uh, fiduciary uh, services to society because he or she undertakes to maintain the trust inherent in the fiduciary uh, relationship. Okay, so not only must the professional accountant have expertise, but he or she must also apply the expert, that expertise with courage, honesty, integrity, objectivity, due care, uh, and professional skepticism, competence, confidentiality, and avoidance of misrepresentation in order to ensure that those relying on the expertise can trust that proper care is taken of their interests. Can cause many people, the stakeholders are depending on the report made by these accountants. Okay, so kalau the report mis, their report is misrepresented, meaning that other people will also, uh, uh, uh we have a, uh, we have a wrong understanding lah with regard to the company. Okay, so perform job as per requirement and regulations uh, that has been established worldwide, okay? Okay, uh, learning outcome number 11 is to explain the meaning of professional codes of conduct, okay? Uh, so, this professional code of conduct is designed uh, to provide guidance about the conduct expected of members in order the, the services pro offered will be acceptable in quality and reputation of the profession. Uh, to have an effective codes of conduct, it, need, uh, it needs to blend with fundamental principles with limited number of specific rules. Okay, uh, so professional, uh, professional code of conduct um, is actually very similar like what you have learned dalam uh, auditing lah. Yeah, on the if you talk about Malaysian uh, chartered accountants, so we are depending on the Malaysian Institute of Accountant. Uh, by law lah, the MIA by, by law. Okay. 
Uh, so now in learning outcome number 12, you can see uh, uh, it described the fundamental principles of code of conduct yeah, in, uh, in accordance to the international principles. Huh? And even though the, the MIA bylaw is actually adopted from the international uh, standard. Okay. Uh, so under the fundamental principles in code of conduct for professional accountant, I mentioned that members should act in the public interest at all time maintain the good re reputation of the profession and its ability to serve the public interest. Perform with integrity, objectivity and independence, uh, professional competence, due care and professional skepticism. Okay. Uh, what does it mean by professional skepticism? Okay, it means that uh, as an accountant, especially as an auditor, uh, you must have a questioning mind. Questioning mind meaning that when you go perform your audit, um, kita bukan nak kata kita ni bersangka buruk, tapi but kita, whatever that is presented in front of us, kita can always question it. Kan, kalau dia kata, okay, uh, uh, we are making profit of 100 million this year then you must request for the documentation for the proof lah. okay so you cannot simply accept the the, the situation okay so if the client ataupun if the company said that uh, okay we already uh, uh, explained this to our shareholders apa semua kan uh, we already documented this in our um, minutes of meeting or whatsoever and then you should request for the proof Kan, you cannot simply as an as an auditor, especially you cannot simply accept whatever that has been uh, provided lah. Kan? So kita kena ada questioning mind as to, okay. And then uh, uh, perform your work with confidentiality, meaning that you don't uh, disclose the information to third party, especially for your own benefit. Okay, meaning that for example, like you are, you are selling the information of the company to the third party, to the rival of the company, for instance. Okay, and then a member also should not be associated with any with any misleading information or misrepresentation, and members should continually assess the risk of failing to observe these principles. Okay, so from time to time, we must always um. Uh, assess ataupun we must always um, apa? Uh, identify, look back at whatever that service that we provided ni, are we still following, ataupun are we still on in line with the uh, professional code of conduct. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. So this is the fundamental principles uh, which is actually the same fundamental, uh, uh, this is according to IFAC, yeah? IFAC uh, 2015 Code of Ethics for Professional Accountant, which is actually similar with the MIA bylaws, okay, as I mentioned, MIA bylaw tu pun adapt from IFAC lah. Okay, uh, so benda ni pun kita dah belajar dalam auditing. Um, a professional accountant shall comply with the following fundamental principles of integrity. So integrity meaning that to be straightforward and honest in all professional and business relationship. To tell the truth, even this situation is a bad situation. Yeah, and so you have to be honest. Uh, and then objectivity. Uh, to not allow bias, conflict of interest or undue influence of others to override professional or business judgment. Uh, so this is uh, sama juga dengan um, quite similar meaning with independent. Yeah? You're being objective, you're being independent, free from bias. Okay. And then uh, professional competence and due care. Uh, to maintain professional knowledge and skill at the level required to ensure that client or employer receive competent professional service based on current development in practice, legislation and techniques, act diligently and in accordance with applicable technical and professional standards. Yeah, kalau according to my by law, uh, professional competence and you can ni maksudnya uh, as an accountant, you have to acquire um, uh, long life learning lah. You always have to update yourself. It's not about you. All, it's not about you. Just uh, you have the degree in accounting, and you have you are uh, you are qualified 
professional uh, you have the qualify you have a qualification of um, apa, professional certificates for example like CCA or CPA for instance uh, tapi you also need to be uh, always update your your knowledge okay uh, it's not just being okay kita dah ada qualification tapi kita tak boleh stop dekat situ kita kena continue pursuing and um, update our knowledge lah kan especially in the current situation ni uh, uh, we have the what we call as IR 4.0 industrial revolution, revol, uh, revolution 4.0 uh, kan so kita pun kena as an accountant have to update ourselves with that situation okay and then uh, confidentiality uh, to respect the confidentiality of information acquired as a result of professional and business relationship and should not disclose any such information to third parties without proper and a specific authority unless there is a legal or professional right or duty to disclose no use for the personal advantage of the professional accountant or third parties okay so simply do not uh, disclose information to third party uh, and last one is professional behavior to make sure the accountant professional accountant must comply with relevant laws and regulation and avoid any action that discredit the profession so what are the example of action that may discredit the profession for example involved in falsifying the records uh, involved in fraudulent bribery and so on okay Okay, uh, learning outcome number 13, uh, so I just discussing the same thing lah ya. Explain the IFAC, IFAC Code of Ethics. So, tadi pun sebenarnya kita dah go through the IFAC Code, code of Ethics. Okay, uh, so in response, um, the current Code of Professional Accountants in the major industrial nation of the world, which resulted from the concerns, investigations, um, uh, commissions and uh, committees, of the late 1980s are converging to the principles and practices embedded in the IFAC Code of Ethics. Okay, however, since there is no obligation to replicate the IFAC Code exactly, particularly if there are cultural or regulatory differences, it is worthwhile to study relevant country codes uh, carefully and in comparison to IFAC Code uh, for reference purpose, the IFAC Code table of content is provided in uh, table 6.10 okay provided in the in the textbook okay uh, so i think um there a similar concept like mfrs where everyone was using prior to mfrs everyone is using their own uh, accounting standards yeah and then bila berlakunya convergence towards uh, the same accounting uh, standards uh, then uh, kita semua move towards the uh, MFRS lah, kan? Uh, so, uh, so daripada uh, in Malaysia kita gunakan IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards, and kita uh, uh, apply that in our uh, situation, so it becomes Malaysian uh, Financial Reporting Standards. So that that's also what happened from IFRS to ethics, where the where the uh, MIA bylaw uh, take that uh, responsibility lah, kan, uh, as, uh, as a guidance of the profession in Malaysia. So the um, uh, apa, uh, in Malaysia, so the um, taken care, they take care lah, of the uh, professional code of conduct for the accountants in Malaysia. So you they guna kan effect code of ethics ni lah. Okay. Um, so sebab tu kalau kita baca yang bayar bylo dengan yang ada dekat sini sebenarnya uh, memang sama. Okay. I believe you all pun dah belajar benda ni masa you buat auditing last time. Okay. Uh, so benda yang sama. This is also the uh, what is what um, actually discuss ataupun what is what are there in the sample of content of MIA bylo. Okay. Uh, so benda yang sama. So kita ada uh, part A, part B, part C betul memang macam ni. Okay. Uh, so just for your overview lah. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Now to proceed dengan learning outcome number 14 uh, Explain the conflict of interest Okay uh, If you learn auditing uh, The major discussion uh, Bila kita belajar MIA by law Is on the independence concept Kan being an uh, auditor Very important Auditor punya mean uh, apa, uh, Code of conduct is being independence Okay Where uh, independent dengan conflict of interest ni actually benda yang hmm, hampir sama lah sebenarnya ya. Uh, when we talk about independence, what does it mean by independence? Independent maksudnya you are free from, you are you being objective, you are free from uh, any conflict of interest. Okay. So one of the most bedeviling uh, 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 aspects of a professional accountant life Uh, because uh, conflict of interest situation threaten to undermine the reason for having an accounting profession to provide assurance that the work of a professional accountant will be governed by independent judgment focused to protect the public interest. Okay, so, so the main kita punya objective is uh, we are the public accountant. So we work, we um, safeguard lah the public interest. Okay, sebab tu The main criteria of an accountant, uh, so bila kita kata accountant, it can be accountant, auditor, tax or whatever you are lah. Kan kalau you um, become MIA member, walaupun you, you are not accountant, uh, kita still panggil you sebagai accountant. Okay, uh, so bila kita sebut accountant ni merangkumi any profession under the accounting field. Okay, uh, so um, Most of the work done is to provide assurance lah, kan? Uh, to provide assurance, to make sure that um, the public interest is safeguard. Okay, so for this reason, the independence uh, standard that the accounting profession must live by are fundamental to the continued uh, success of the profession. Uh, the independence standards, okay? It, uh, uh, fundamental to the uh, profession, its members and their firms. Uh, continued uh, success of the profession, its member and uh, their firm. Sorry, uh, any double, I have double uh, stated this one. Yeah? Okay, okay. So, a professional accountant is called on he on in his or her professional code to hold himself or herself free from any influence, interest or relationship in respect of his or her client's affairs, which impacts, which impacts, impacts meaning that which may affect his or her professional judgment or objectivity or which in the view of a reasonable observer will impair the member's professional judgment or objectivity. So you have to prevent yourself, you must um, avoid from anything that may impair your uh, independence as an accountant, okay? Consequently, there are two distinct aspects to be kept in mind, the reality of having a conflict of interest and the appearance that one might be present, okay? This lead to the two types of independence what we call as independence of mind and independence in appearance. So, yang ni sebijik kita belajar dah dalam audit. Uh, so, independence of mind is the state of mind that permits uh, the expression of a conclusion without being affected by influences that compromise uh, professional judgments, allowing an individual to act with integrity, objectivity and Uh, professional uh, skepticism. Okay, uh, so independent in mind meaning that uh, uh, how you yourself act independently in uh, when you face certain you know situation. Okay, for example, a uh, situation where uh, you are being treated, uh, you are being treated by by a company. Okay, if you, uh, you as an accountant or as an auditor, you find out that this company is doing some fraudulent, you know, activity. And you, when you discover this, of course, as a professional, as a, a, 
uh, and honest in, with integrity uh, uh, upholding your profession as an accountant you want to to report this kan uh, so this company might threaten you okay if you report this to the higher authority um, we we will um, uh, suspend you from work kan ataupun I will kill your family member kan for example kan uh, they threaten you then so what so at that point of time ataupun the very simple thing is where you are given uh, bribe bribery kan you are, you are being bribed okay uh, instead of you nak report this situation to the uh, to the higher authority I will bagi you uh, 10 times of your salary for example let's say you are making 5000 a month you dapat 50000 cash I bagi so at that point of time how your independence be okay will you still follow your professional um uh, sorry will you still uphold your professional integrity to sebagai accountant to report the things ataupun you accept that 50 thousand ringgit uh, that bribery okay so that is independent in my in mind lah. kalau independence in appearance is normally what other people perceive you as being independent okay so the avoidance of fact and circumstances they are so significant that reasonable and informed third party having knowledge of all relevant information including a safeguard apply or reasonably conclude a firms or a member of the assurance team's integrity objectivity or professional skepticism had had been compromised in appearance is what other people perceive you as being independent uh let's say uh, uh so other people can be maybe the shareholders so how do they perceive um this auditor being independent okay so if the apa uh, shareholders or the third party know that the the auditor has a relationship with the company. Contohnya, the company to own by his wife or her uh, her husband, ke, for example, kan? Atau, or his family member. So, kat situ mesti ada, you know, uh, somehow the independence can be uh, compromised. Okay. Uh, so that is independence, lah. Uh, okay, uh, so these are examples of conflict of interest. If let's say you still don't understand apa maksud conflict of interest tu, okay. Um, so example like providing corporate finance services to a client seeking to acquire an audit client of the firm when the firm has obtained confidential information during the course of the audit that may be relevant to the transaction advising two client at the same time who are competing to acquire the same company when the advice might be relevant to the party's comp uh, competitive positions okay um uh, other than that providing service to both a vendor and a purchaser for a client of the firm in relation to the same transaction um other than that, conflict of interest is where you uh, the, the same account the same audit accounting firm provide accounting service to the client and at the same time they provide audit service to the same client. So that is a conflict of interest. Okay, that, that may create a, a threat to auditors independence. Or another simple example is by you perform audit to your own family member for example so yang tu pun akan create, create conflict of interest if you have a uh, financial interest in the company you you audit that particular company and you have financial interest in the company maybe you are holding shares in the company you are borrowing from the company for example so you your independent might be might be impact might be affected it may raise a conflict of interest lah, as an uh, accountant okay so you can read lah for, for the understanding okay, of the example. Uh, okay, uh, so these are the, the next one is to discuss on the threat. Uh, second I said that the threats to the non-compliant ataupun threats to uh, normally to 
lebih kepada indip- auditors independence lah. Okay. Uh, so compliance with fundamental principles may be threatened by a broad range of circumstances. So many threats fall into following uh, categories. So adverse interest threat. Uh, so yang ni and we never cover dalam uh, auditing uh, in diploma level. Uh, tapi yang kita, track yang kita cover, we, we have your self-interest track, okay, self-review track, advocacy track, familiarity track, and intimidation track, okay. So, adverse track, uh, that is a member will not act with objectivity because the member's interests are opposed to the uh, client's interests. Oh, you need if... Uh, Masing-masing have their own uh, interest lah atau objektif kan, okay. So, self-interest, uh, a member could benefit financially or otherwise from an interest or relationship, a client or person associated with the uh, client. Uh, self-interest maksudnya you have financial, macam saya kata tadi, financial or non-financial interest in the company. You own a shares in the company, for example, okay. Uh, self-review track. Uh, so self review track is where um, uh, example I, I bagi tadi accounting firm provide accounting service and auditing service to the same client. So you uh, you send your accountant untuk prepare accounts for the company and you send your own auditor juga pergi audit that company. So you are reviewing your own work lah from the same because you are from the same uh, audit firm. Okay, nah, contohnya macam uh, you jawab exam, you sendiri yang marking your paper. Self review lah tu. Okay, uh, management participation track that a member will take on the role of client management or otherwise assume management responsibility such may occur during an engagement to provide non-attest services. Okay, uh, And then advocacy track that a member will promote a client's interest or position to the point that his or her objectivity or independent is compromised. Uh, so meaning that now you you become a, a promoter to the client's firm. Uh, you promote ke, client punya share ke, for example. Okay. A familiarity track that due to a long or close relationship with the client, a member will become too sympathetic to the client's interest and too accepting of the client's work or product. Okay, uh, because you you dah audit that particular firm dah dekat 10 tahun dah. Uh, definitely you can build some, you know, relationship at situ. Uh, so that is also not a good, uh, apa nama, not, not a good uh, engagement lah kat situ. Okay, uh, so even audit firm pun dia tak boleh nak engage with the same company for so long time. Sebab ni lah dia akan create a familiarity track. So, bila you become close to, to that person, uh, you become cepat kesian lah kan. Uh, anything that is made wrong by the company pun mungkin you akan, uh, you did not disclose it. Okay. So, intimidation threat, okay, that a member will, will subordinate his or her judgment to an individual associated with a client or any relevant party due to that individual re- reputation or expertise aggressive or dominant personality or attempt to coerce, coerce or exercise excessive influence over the member. So this is where you, uh, the the um, audit firm, uh, audit firm, sorry, the company, the client uh, uh, threaten the, the, the audit firm. Okay, so kalau dia kata if the audit firm uh, disclose this uh, fraudulent activity yang dia buat ni, then uh, next year I will no longer uh, proceed with your engagement with your company. Hmm. Maksudnya, I tak nak ambil lah, you jadi our auditor anymore. Hmm. So, that kind of threat lah provided. Okay, now. so therefore, maksudnya kat sini, as an accountant, we have we need to avoid from, uh, you know, involving in this uh, kind of threat lah. Okay. Okay, and last one, learning outcome number 15, uh, differentiate the types of conflicts of interest. Okay, um, so basically, the other, uh, this is the types one, yeah. Self versus others, uh, self and others versus others. 
client versus client, employer versus employer and stakeholder versus stakeholder. Okay. Uh, so, kalau staff versus others, uh, sphere of activity affected, uh, service offered, uh, improper use of influence, misuse of information. Example, uh, conflict, conflicting services, shaving quality, okay, improper purchase of clients, uh, goods, improper investment by uh, relatives. Okay. Uh, self and others versus others uh, in term of service offered. So, over involvement with management or directors erodes uh, objectivity. Okay, so too much um, uh, apa, too much uh, maybe too much uh, service offered. Uh, kan, menyebabkan kita over involvement with the management. So, may somehow impair the objectivity uh, as an accountant. Uh, client versus clients, uh, employer versus employer in term of service offered. So, serving competing client or competing employers at the uh, same time. Okay, uh, so much contohnya kita uh, provide service to uh, client yang uh, memang rival with each other. Okay, for example, uh, Uh, for example, like uh, like kita bagi very simple example, KFC dengan McDonald's. So, they are rival kan? So, they provide the quite the same thing, uh, quite the same uh, uh, apa fast food kan? Uh, jadi, kita provide pula uh, accounting service kepada both parties ni. Okay, padahal they are rival. Okay. Uh, so, this, that can also make, you know, create a uh, conflict of interest. So, stakeholder versus stakeholder, uh, misuse of information, confidentiality, so whistleblowing, uh, reporting to government or uh, regulators. Okay. Um, so, I, so, basically that's all on the uh, um, chapter, uh, for chapter, chapter 4. Okay. Um, So, for the next one, kita akan fokus on doing the uh, tutorial question. Okay. So, if you have any question, um, you can always uh, PM me. Okay. Okay. Thank you.